the captains, welcoming you aboard Boys Trip. We request that all mobile phones and other electronic devices be turned on. We've been sent here to kick ass and kill toxic masculinity, and we're fresh out of asses. I'm Corner Store Poppy. I'm David Marcus. I'm Lyle I'm Lyle. Every week we bring you a discussion on different topics. So sit back, relax, and take flight. Boys Trip. Ah! You know Just what? Just the tip. <laughs> Speaking of that, all right. So we have another. We have another member of Boys Trip, Bishop, and we wanted to bring him on a live podcast. But he lives in Brazil. He grew up with us here, here in um, New Jersey. And um, but the audio quality, we can't quite get it right, and we like the sound. You know, we like the. You like the A one quality. Yeah, yeah. We like the sound like like this, and we didn't want him to come in on. You know, so. We had him record us um, a recording about something going on in Brazil where apparently gay rappers are all the rage right now and other people who are not gay are, are pretending to be. But I don't want to give it all away. So let's let's listen to Bishop. So this is my debut on Boys Trip. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. See, y'all didn't put me on the intro. You know what I mean, we... We got to work that out. We got to find out the logistics, uh, how you can get my voice a little bit more crispy and put me in on there. So uh, first off, my name is Bishop. For all that don't know, that's B-I-X-O-P. Uh, I spell it with the Portuguese. In Portuguese, the S, the X has the S-H-O-P. And I speak Portuguese more now because I'm living in the country of Brazil. But I roll with these cats, David, Lyle, uh, Corner Store Poppy. We're all we're all from the same area. We all, you know, came up knowing each other, came up together, all friends. So we're all a part of this. I feel a little left out, you know, because I'm here, but I'm there in spirit, and I will be there because of the heightened technology that we have in 2008, where I can send audio uh, from thousands of miles away. So this episode, we're doing things a little different, you know. We're gonna talk about something that's going on out here in Brazil that I find very interesting. First off, we're going to talk about why I'm here in Brazil. Okay, so I'm here in Brazil pursuing a career in music. As many people go to New York, you know, people immigrate to other places because they feel that they have a chance to become successful in a certain area in that place. And I chose Brazil. Lyle Loma Lyle and I, we have a group together, Negros Americanos. Uh, We formed, actually, we moved to Panama and formed the group. I'm not going to say the year because it dates us, you know, but uh, it's a very interesting story. No time to tell it. There is a documentary about it. Negros Americanos Lost in the Wilderness. Lost in the Wilderness. Check it out. It's on YouTube. It's only about 20 something minutes. Takes you on a wild roller coaster ride. Uh, But when we came back, you know, we did a lot of shows. I decided to, to, to leave the States. And come to Brazil, you know, I, I, I fell in love with Brazilian hip hop music. Why? Brazilian hip hop music, uh, starting from, you know, the late 80s, when it really started to get, you know, to get going, you had groups like Hacienais MCs, you had groups like uh, RZO, you had groups like uh, Dexter, um, 509X, you, you had a lot of different uh, groups talking about political music, you know, not political, but they call it protest rap. You know, it has a purpose. It's Chuck D, public enemy. You know what I mean? You There's a lot of anger there, but it's not like I, I'll kill you anger. It's like uh, I want to change the system anger, but not in a corny way, you know what I mean? It, it, in, a, in a way that's still urban, it's still like, don't, don't, don't mess with me. But like, I want to see my people do better. And these, 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 these politicians are robbing, you know what I mean? And still making you bob your head and dance. And that's what Brazilian hip hop is from the city of Sao Paulo specifically, because every city kind of adopted the hip hop to their own format. Now, um, why am I talking about Brazilian hip hop and the draw that I had to it? Because there's a thing going on now here in Brazil where, um, there are a lot of new hip hop artists coming and pop artists, you know, and funk artists that are gay, um, gay rap, gay 
uh, music in Brazil, gay artists are really, really, really on the come up. And something that I find extremely, extremely interesting, and I wanted to know if this is something that is, is existing just here in Brazil, or is it a worldwide phenomenon? Because I haven't really been keeping 100% uh, up on what's going on in the music room in the United States right now. So you guys are going to have to clue me in on if there's any gay rappers coming up in the United States. But let's talk about some of, of the gay artists that are coming up out here. So you have like, let's say a pop artist like uh, Pablo Vitar, right? Pablo Vitar is huge. One of the biggest uh, artists coming out of Brazil right now is Pablo Vitar. Now, he is... A, he dresses like a woman. He's a cross dresser. You know, he's gay. He's a cross dresser. Some people uh, uh, make the mistake of saying that he's transgender, but he's not transgender because he does peel off the the face uh, in his leisure time. I do believe there there have been interviews. I've seen him in his other form. You know, so I'm not going to refer to him as a her. I know there's rules of engagement. I've been staying abreast to it. But uh, yeah, so Pablo Vitar is huge. And I'm talking like if you go on, on YouTube and type in Pablo Vitar, that's P-A-B-L-O-V as in Valley, I-T-T-A-R. If you do that, you will find that this individual has well over 250 million views on some videos. And that's like something that any any artist right now, that's how we're judging the 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 the, the grand debt is that's how we're judging, you know, how big an artist is right now by their, their YouTube presence and, and all that other stuff. That's up there, you know. When he does shows, I mean the guy ranks in like twenty thousand to twenty five, thirty thousand reels a show, but even that, that's like almost ten thousand dollars. You know, right now the dollar reel ratio is a little skewed. You know, but we're still looking at at least eight thousand dollars for a show. You know, and that's in a in a country that people call third world. I mean, it's developing, is which I like the words I like to use, and not say third world, because these countries are going to come up, and you know. There's a lot of money here, especially in Brazil. There's a lot of money uh, in Brazil. I mean, it, there's a lot more that needs to be here, but there is a lot of money, and certain artists are making a lot. So there's certain artists that make millions, and they only tour in Brazil, maybe Portugal, maybe Angola, because there's money in Angola too. And that's another. That's for another episode. We'll talk about something about that. Uh, but. We're talking about an artist with a lot of money and a lot of influence. A lot of people like him. There are many members of society that do not like artists like Pablo Vitar. Uh, they think that it, they're trying to force me to accept something that, um, you know, in the Bible, it says that it's wrong because you do have a, lot, a big evangelic society here. There's a lot of seven day Adventists uh, here in Brazil. And, um, so we're, we're talking about somebody that is kind of controversial because, you know, I, even politicians are kind of making headway. I don't know if you know that there's an election coming up here. And part of the election is trying to bring the old military regime back to kind of like censor all these things. They're like, why do I have to see this now? I'm not going to say that they have a point. They don't. But I am going to say that this. I generally feel uncomfortable when I walk and uh, I see a man and a woman tongue kissing in front of me. I think it's because I'm kind of like prudish because I grew up in the United States because here it's like completely normal. People tongue kiss in the open all the time, like like on the train, everywhere. I'm just like, really? You're doing that? That's what's, that's what's happening right now. Okay. And I'll look the other way because now it like it blinds your whole left side vision you don't want to make it seem like you're getting off looking at them you know what i mean and that's it goes on in the back of your head you're like i don't want these people to think like i'm like yeah hey, yeah you can put that tongue in that mouth you know what i mean i, I so I, I just don't look that way but then i might miss something i might miss something interesting that, that that's going on so these things do make me feel uncomfortable whether it's a woman and a man or a man and a man i get uncomfortable so like in a music video, like I didn't sign up for that. I didn't sign up for seeing uh, a man and a woman kiss. And I didn't sign up for seeing a man and a man kiss. 
But Pablo Vitar has put that imagery in his his videos. Now, uh, I'm talking about Pablo Vitar, which is technically a pop singer, and I talked about rap earlier. There are a lot of other rappers coming up, uh, gay rappers. You have these dudes uh, that made a cypher with a, a, a group of like 10 gay rappers that are going to come up. It's called Quebrada Queer. That's Quebrada, which means hood. So that's Q-U-E-B-R-A-D-A and queer, like we spell queer. Uh, and you will find a group of um, rappers. There's like pink pastels, uh, white screen behind, you know, just flashy pink and purple. And they're kind of eccentric with makeup and stuff like that. Some of them look like dudes you don't want to play around with, though. You know what I mean? Some of them are, are a little bit more fem feminine. And like, yo, the, the, the cypher is extremely dope. Like I listen to it on, you know, in my leisure time sometimes. And what it is that I really like about it is that it does embody all of the elements that hip hop was created for, especially here in Brazil, the hip hop that started here in Sao Paulo that I said was very protest oriented and talking about the conditions that black people were living in, um, they're talking about the conditions that gay people are living in. And they're talking, it's not like they're just saying, yeah, woke up, want to suck a dick. You know what I mean? No, it's just like, yo, you you can't control me. You can't um, tell me who I say I can say that I need to be. If I'm free, if I feel free this way, this is who I am. Society can't paint my picture. And then I'm like, yo, that's the exact same thing that we that we say. You know what I mean? Because, like, just because I have my hair like this doesn't mean that I'm going to rob you. And the image of me having my hair like this robbing you is skewed because it wasn't created for that. Like, dreadlocks wasn't that type of thing before. So, like, that that's what they're doing. I, I, I identify with that. Like, I'm not gay, but I identify with anybody that's struggling. You know what I mean? I'm not from Sri Lanka. But, you know, I mean, I identify with people that are being oppressed there. You know, I mean? I'm not from Chad. I'm not from Papua New Guinea. But you identify with people that are that are being oppressed and, you know, that are going through something. So I find that uh, the, the gay rap when you when you do like that, you know, what I mean, it's dope. I mean, it's dope all around, because to be honest, if it's just protesty, then it's just like, all right, I've heard like 20 artists do that. Where's my woke up when I suck a dick? At least give me that one time, you know what I mean? Just for a wow factor. There's also an actual transgender of Danny Lisboa. It's better than uh, Pablo Vittar because she actually raps. So it's dope. Like Pablo Vittar is a pop singer. She raps and then has like poppy hooks. But the flow is extremely dope, you know what I mean? And just like I said with Cabra the Queer, she's talking about like they're talking about being gay men. She's talking about being a transgender, but it's like political type protest rap. You know what I mean? With poppy hooks. So it's like really dope. Uh, then, right, every time something is successful and it's working, we always have the imitators. So you have this guy, right? His name's Nego do Borel, which means the, the, the black dude from uh, Borel, which is favela in Rio de Janeiro a specific uh, favela neighborhood or whatever. And, um, you know, he's already popular. He's been on TV plenty of times. He's got hit songs in the past. You know, he decided that he was going to uh, cross-dress. He's, like, playing the role of a... a of, no, it's not a transgender. He's playing... He's cross-dressing, you know what I mean? And um, he just took it too far because he's not gay. So it's just, like, it's it seemed like a a plea for for attention like yo I'm, i exist pay attention to me i'm using something that's been popular now and it's popular to be accepting of it so i'm gonna like go the extra mile and like he went like he was in a dress you know what i mean which is you know that's normal even for the united states how many dudes that aren't gay are in dresses just for attention right but like how many dudes that wear dresses for attention in the united states go this extra mile Type in the video. That's N E G O Nego. Next a space do D O right. Another space Borel B O R E L right. Then the name the name of the song is Mi Salta. That's M E space 
S O L T A. Okay, type that in and you'll see if he went too far or not. Okay, this individual decided to tongue kiss another man in like a deep, intimate one. And we're talking about a guy that, that claims he's not gay, you know, uh, in the video. And it had the reverse effect because real gay people called them out on it. That's like, it's almost the equivalent of seeing Vanilla Ice, you know what I mean? Check out the beat while my DJ revolves it. It's like, go somewhere with that. You know, you're not one of us. You know, uh, that's the exact same thing that they saw when they saw him do that. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. He, he, got, he got pulled, his card got pulled. And there's a thing called pink money that I, I didn't know about before. I, it's a secret society, yo. That's the thing, yo. Gay dudes are mad organized. They have the organization that we need as black people. We need to, like, get with them and, and just learn their ways, you know what I mean? Sit by the door and we learn their tactics because the, the pink money is real. And they got mad at him trying saying that he's trying to get his hands in pink money. Pink money is black money, you know what I mean? It revolves around the gay community, not just the gay community, the LBGTQ community which encompasses a lot and i just learned what queer meant it, 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 it's, it's a very interesting concept um so you know there's that you, if you if you're going to come up as as a gay artist in brazil you definitely have to uh, be gay really be gay you know and, and not try to fake the funk like our friend uh nego do borel now uh this is something that, like I said, I find extremely interesting. I agree with it because they're not taking any opportunities away from any straight artists. You know what I mean? It's not like somebody's like trying to uh, vulture, you know what I mean? The game, if you will, like, you know, we deal with in the United States. They just want a piece of the pie. They're saying, hey, yo, we go through things, we struggle. This is what rap is about, to talk about our struggle. This is what music is about. And, you know, I'm an artist, and, you know, my sexuality has nothing to do with my art. Boom. And I, I'm, I feel that. You know what I mean? That's real. And I want to know if do you think, if this does not exist yet in the United States, is there a market for it? Do you think that it will creep in? And if it does creep in, how do you think the hyper-masculine dudes, you know what I mean, the quote-unquote hoteps too, that people talk, I don't like the fact that people use that word to, to describe uh, annoying-ass dudes, you know what I mean, but we, we, when you say it, I automatically know exactly the category that of person that you're talking about. Do you think that these type of people uh, will be accepting of it. We already know the answer to that, but I want to know what the audience thinks, and I want to know what you guys on the panel thinks. Peace. Uh -huh. So there we have it. Wow, there's a lot to get into there. Yeah. Yeah, man. A whole lot. Should we dive in balls deep? <sighs> Might as well. I'm down. So. Um, I think one of the uh, main things that Jordan mentioned was keeping in mind, hip-hop is a tool, right? It is a culture, and it is a platform to express messages. Thank God for hip-hop. Not, we'd have to depend on CNN, CVS, NBC, you know what I'm saying? to get our information out. Like what Cameron was saying, he's like, he's a street journalist. He talks about what's going on in the hood. Especially so, especially in the era where, where hip-hop um, grew, where, before we had social media and all of that. It really was a way, you know. A way to figure out. It was the out. only way to get lyrics and words into the mainstream. You want to know only Queens way. Bridge? You listen to Mob Deep. You listen everything, to Nas. You know? Everything was closed off. Mm -hmm. MTV. MTV wouldn't even carry hip hop back then, like yeah. just to put it in the context. Yeah, man. Any so, black artist could. This is marginalized groups creating music that represents them. So, like, especially uh, now that hip hop is grown and it's more inclusive than it's been before, I think it should maintain um, being a voice of the oppressed. You know what? <laughs> a lot of modern day, like mainstream hip hop, you think they're making records with cats like Donald Trump. 
you know, who could relate to that? You know how slow the new Rolls Royce be. Like, <laughs> take the fucking bus. <laughs> you know I mean? like, like, not only yeah. do you have a Rolls Royce, but man, that shit's slow. Yeah. You complaining about a Rolls Royce. Yeah. Now, this is a different level. So, um, for oppressed people, um, transgender, LGBTQ, for that community to, um, to use hip hop, so be it. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what it's for. This shit ain't for oligarchs. You know what I'm saying? Well, they, yeah, they, yeah. It's it's George Collins said this about the blues and about white people singing the blues. He's like, anybody can <laughs> hit those notes, you gotta know why. Yeah. What's the meaning behind the blues? You know what I'm saying? Why is Mahalia Jackson singing like that? You know, so it's like you could play along and shit, but yo, transgender people are being hunted down and murdered. You know what I'm saying? And like, who's gonna speak up for them? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So like, it's cool that Cats is grabbing the mic now and is on the platform. Like, yo. We matter too, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm glad. Honestly, I'm glad that it's opening up to that extent because think about how monolithic hip hop was uh, when we were coming up, man. You had you had to talk about your gun, you had to rep your block, you know what I mean, or just be mad, disrespectful to chicks. Yeah, yeah. It's like those were those were your 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 avenues. It's like, are right, you gonna be a gangster? You are gonna be a hustler? You're gonna be a pimp. You right. have to be violent. You gotta be violent. Yeah. yeah. You know, against your own, you know? And um I just I just think that's uh that's part of the world becoming more liberal. I mean this is yeah. Yeah, and more and more accepting. This was unimaginable um fifteen years ago. Like I remember remember the, the, the phenomenon they had, I don't know if it was on Wendy Williams show or kinda of surrounding it, but it was kinda of on New York radio with they had the 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 quote homo thugs DMX I show no love for homo thugs how you going justify kissing a man but then some dudes came out like actual homo thugs they I remember they were at Hot ninety seven and stuff like they they would bring them on for shows and stuff it was almost like a sideshow like yeah. look at these dudes you know wow. but like it seemed inconceivable that you could ever have openly gay rappers and we don't in the U S yet we're talking about Brazil. But it's interesting that that it, that has happened there. Openly gay rappers and, and I guess and pop stars too, which is a little less surprising. But yeah, there's uh, there's some indie rappers, some indie gay rappers. Shout out to Buck Dudley, my man Dynex put me on. He put this on my wall, trying to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It was called a song by this dude named Bryant, mm -hmm. and the song was called the slogan. <laughs> he said the chorus went, "Dicks over chicks is the slogan." I rip my sh I rip my shirt off like I'm Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but um, but yo, there's there's some cats out there that's aggressively rapping like, yeah. Yeah, put your nigga suck his dick. What you that's, know what I mean? Like, that's 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 the, pretty much what Jordan was saying with the um, you know, with the make the sprite can disappear in your mouth type thing. But like, also he said that they could rap. They could really rap. It's yeah. not like they, you know, it, it's not like that's their. That's their thing, and it's they like can't rap. And it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not a gimmick from what he's saying. So that's that's pretty interesting. But it's funny too. He talked about his reaction. You know, not not wanting to see a man. You know, he he can have a preference. There's yeah. nothing wrong with um having preferences and you know being honest about what you're comfortable and uncomfortable with. But it, yeah, it, for sure, it, you have to um also question you know your own um complexes and stuff like okay. Do I react this, like, okay, as far as saying, like, oh, people are shoving it in your face, we don't say that about heterosexuality, Yeah. you know, um, yeah. Um, yeah. because it's the norm, you know, and when we see something different from it, say, ooh, what's that? It's, it's, it's making me feel, yeah. but if we say, okay, look at it this way, rather than, like, oh, those are them, or they, right, that's a human being <laughs> <laughs> that um, enjoys another human being yeah. in this way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there are a lot of other things that make me more uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as motherfuckers uh, that can threaten my safety. Yeah. <laughs> but um, two people enjoying themselves, y'all, I'd rather that than motherfuckers killing each other. But but we didn't, yeah, but we didn't grow up, none of us, if you're born in the 80s, 90s, you didn't grow up seeing, ever seeing a man kiss, man, kiss another yeah, man on television. Television. Nah. Like, it's just something you didn't nah. see. I remember, remember that Snickers commercial? The um, Super Bowl commercial, it got pulled off because this was at the beginning of like the, this new, I guess, um, kind of gay rights era that, that, that started some years ago. It was two men sharing a Snickers bar 
And then like they were eating it, but they both they showed how much they wanted Snickers. That was something I forget. And they got they eat it to the And eventually their mouth touch or whatever and it gets weird between them and they just don't say anything the rest of the commercial now he's like do something manly so then he rips hair off yeah, his chest yeah, like, ah! exactly. yeah, like, yeah. to cancel out the, yeah and they took toxic that shit yeah, lasted toxic. for yeah, like that's, a week that's problematic. and they, they, rip, they ripped it off that was like it had to be 10 years or less ago they ripped it off television I'm but uh that. yeah yeah <laughs> but because a lot of people we, we didn't we didn't grow up seeing that yeah, yeah. I say this, man. Uh, I had one of my close friends. Uh -huh. He came out the closet, right? Yeah. And for a minute, he didn't tell anybody, and he didn't tell me. And this is one of my boys, yo, yeah. like my brothers. And he said I would judge him. He thought I would judge him. And I'm like, man, what? What about me makes you think that because you're gay, I would stop being friends with you? This is a while ago, though, too, right? Yeah. This was this was in the 2000s. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So this is when like. Cocksucker take one for your team, like Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Jay Z, these fucking faggot ass man. Yeah. Like so, that that was normal. And you listen to that language. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was bumping D Block. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> DMX, yo, DMX. Yeah, listen, he listen says up some where the hood, where the hood, where yeah. the hood at. Yeah. He's like, I show no love for homo thugs. Show no love to yeah. homo thugs. Yeah. And then he has a dude in, in, like he's, you know, his video is mad. Testosterone, man, dude, shirts off and shit. Yeah. So he had this dude like shirt off, gangsta, but then he had lipstick on and was wearing high heels mm. in the video, and it was like he was demeaning him. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So it was during that era, I guess. <laughs> but um, nah, it just it just it just makes you think about uh, just one. We could talk in here like y'all like that girl, man. I'm talking to this girl with the freedom yeah. of. Being able to, to to talk about our love interests yeah. or or who we're attracted to, imagine having to hide that shit all your life. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then, or even having to pretend you're somebody you're not, just so you're not gonna be judged. You know what I'm saying? So that I feel like that shit's hell of oppressive. And when when I saw one of my boys go through coming out, it's like damn. And then he like stopped fucking with me because yeah. he thought I was homophobic. Yeah, you know, it's like damn, yo, I um. I don't want to play a part in the role of anyone's oppression, yo. Yeah. You know, we want to be agents of liberation. So, we want folks to be as comfortable with themselves as possible, and but also mindful. This world is crazy, man. Some folks come out and they're killed. Yeah. You know, so, and or in Jersey City, there's a home. There's a home downtown Jersey City that's just reserved for homeless gay people oh, okay. who've been ostracized by their families, yo. You imagine that shit? Wow. I didn't know that. So, it's like... On the xenophobe tip, we all need to take a bite out of this thing called humanity and realize it has many different flavors and colors, but at the end of the day, blood runs through all of our veins, yo. We all need food, clothes, shelter, oxygen, <laughs> affection. Love is love. Social and love, yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, um, I don't have to watch this shit. I, don't, I, have, I, have, I have a friend that does porn. I don't watch his porn, and yeah. I'm heterosexual. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't have to watch everything. Well, you know, you, uh, when when it came to being uncomfortable with either like the 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 gay lyrics or 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 the visual, I was thinking about all the stuff just in general in hip hop that would make people uncomfortable, like the stuff about women. Women still listen. A lot of women still listen, even though they realize even more than we did how problematic the hip hop was. So, you know, and Annie Ma take off your panties. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. And, and even stuff. <laughs> I remember I, I used to watch Everyday Show. I remember um DJ Academic said it before, like not liking to um like the, the sexually explicit lyrics a woman says to a man, feeling uncomfortable when those lyrics came on. I never felt uncomfortable when they came on, but like if Can I Get Her comes on and it's the part where she like um, put pussy, pussy on, on your mustache. mustache. <laughs> I put this pussy on your mustache. I don't say that line. Like, I, I don't say it myself. You don't say that? I say that shit. Put the pussy on my mustache. On mustache. I don't know. I skip it a lot. Like, Nikki said, put, she said she put, put the pussy, pussy, pussy on your side burn. burn. She Yo, said, put the burn. pussy on your chip tooth when Yo, she did that thing with Fabulous. Oh, shit. That's dope. Yeah. Damn. I mean, See, I, 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 I'm but, but I, that. I, I've skipped some. Sometimes I just, I just don't, won't say that line. I don't think nothing's wrong with that, but you know, it's. it's you can't, you, because you can't own it. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah. You, you can't own it. You don't. You suck my dick. Like you could, you could, you say like when you hear old dirty bastards say, "They can lick my balls, suck my dick." Yeah, like, it's like a, it's like a call and response. You but a lot of women yeah. do say that stuff, so it's kind of like we got this like privilege just sitting up and like you know, nah, we don't, 
picking out little things in hip hop that we don't want to say. Where like some people listen to a whole song and it's all dudes talking shit about. You know what I mean? And about about what they're gonna do to a woman. To a woman. And then and when like, Foxy Brown says some shit, oh, oh wait, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, wait, yeah, hold yeah. on, ah. My goodness. That, that, <laughs> was, a, that was aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Raw dog without protection, disease infection. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah but yeah. we can say open vagina, put your legs behind your head. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I love Cam though, so, you know what I mean? Fucking um, Ghostface, my favorite song. Favorite Ghostface album is Iron Man. Second song, it comes on, that was the best fucking I've ever had. Do you have a name? <laughs> He comes on, yo, bitch, I fucked your friend. Yeah, you stank, ho. <laughs> I saw on the elevator, honey, grab my Kango. <laughs> he said, we we slid to the washing machine, put it on spin. If the pussy dry, spit on my dick and put it in. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> so, so, what about the gay appropriation? The pink money that he talked about, like, people... Yeah, that's, you know what, that's a little, if you were real, if you were like, I get some real ally or whatever. Yeah, um, but, yeah. But if it's like gimmicky, like, okay, like, oh. In the you can be an of, ally, but you're not gay. Yeah. And if you go out pretending you're gay and doing gay things in a video and it's not your reality, it's kind of like, it's just being, it's being extremely fake. And you, you either, you either do that and you're gay or you're not. It's like, you know, being an ally isn't being it. That's almost like yeah. getting in blackface when you think of it like that. Yeah, ah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> They're going to get G-checked at Christopher Street. <laughs> that McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> woo <Woo-wee. You> know, <laughs> Christopher Street McDonald's. Oh, yeah, man. I remember being like 18, 19, the first time you go there. And in the city late, you know, you can finally go to the city, stay till 1 in the morning. And you go to that McDonald's at 1 in the morning. And this is oh, eye opening. By the, by the black pussy cat. <laughs> it's extremely eye opening. Over by the blue, blue note, right? It's over. It's it's a couple. It's it's one of them streets over here. Mm-hmm. Across from the IFC. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's why I saw Homo Thugs for the first time. I remember. Um, same thing in high school. We went up there, a couple mm-hmm. of us, and um, you know, it it let me know for a second. That's what women be going through, yo, with the cat calling mm-hmm. and feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Cause this dude like Terry Crews, yo, like big as hell. He had rainbow. Remember, Khalees had the rainbow lipstick. Yeah, this yeah. cat had rainbow lipstick at the McDonald's and was ice grilling me, and then winked at me and licked his lips. And I just like, yo, I just I shrunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was just like, he was way bigger you than me. You felt small. I felt very small and vulnerable. This guy, he was muscular. He would beat me in an arm wrestle. You know, so imagine. <laughs> Full body, yeah, I just, bro. I felt very vulnerable. And, you know, casually made my way up out of there. Yeah. And I don't think I ate any McDonald's that day. <laughs> um, but felt so uncomfortable where it's like, I got to leave. And that's never had happened to me before. Yeah. So I felt like, all right, on one tip, that's the shit women be going through every day. Every day. Yeah. Every that's, day. I, I've had a, cu- a couple similar experiences to that. And the same thing. I'm like, damn, that was extremely annoying. That was unpleasant, and like that's every day. Even if it's more respectful, like even if it's not as outward as what you said, I'm just like that's just just from a human, not not nothing homophobic from a human human level. Like I can't just go and you know go about my day. Yeah. yeah. Now it's one thing if you desire that person, right? In any context, hetero or you know homo. Right. Um, if that's a person you find attractive and you're interested in, but if it's unwarranted, yeah, and you don't want that shit. Um, yeah, it's awkward regardless. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a level of disrespect, you know. And I, but the thing is, with courting, there's 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 ways to engage people without dehumanizing. Yeah. <laughs> like or maybe tr- say hello. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But like, like all that type of shit, yeah. you know. Um, and then when you hear it from a man, like, who is this guy? Is he talking to me? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! It's a bunch of them, and they're eyeing me. Yeah. Yo. Uh, mm-hmm. Because yeah. it was a it's a situation. different thing. Like you know when cats is like. They they're um they're scoping you out maybe to rob you maybe to check who you are or whatever just jump it you wasn't jump yeah. you take yeah. a shit you know you could feel that energy it wasn't that yeah <laughs> it was something a little more carnal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know I felt like a piece of meat yeah man you know yeah. Nas he had this song going on what was that what album was that Godson get down he's like some he's like some niggas fuck the enemy in the ass when they catch them weird ass niggas who dangerous so don't test them. I ain't testing guys, yo. Nah, yeah. I ain't testing. 
ain't Ving Rhames. <laughs> fiction shit. No. <laughs> no, but even even if it's not even if it's not a real big person, I remember it's about six years ago. I worked in New Brunswick, and I used to go to this little health food store on lunch, lunch break. And about six years ago, it was this older guy. I don't know, forties, maybe. Yeah, and he would always be. Re- he always, he was super in. Inter- like he he was clearly gay, but he would say like inappropriate things more or less. Like his vibe, yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was real inappropriate. So, uh, what do you do on weekend? And he would always, and like, all right, one day I come back, the same sort of thing. And I would be sitting and then he would come and sit at the little table with me and shit. And I, I stopped going there. Yeah. I stopped going yeah. there. I was like, but that's a regular everyday experience for a woman. For a woman it's yeah. a dude yeah. that's just keep like, hey, hey, so, you know, next day, not give, uh, third day, fourth day, still like, hey, you know. Yep. But they can't just, they don't even, they don't even stop going to the places a lot of times because it's like, it's, if you go somewhere else, it's going to be another, you know. That, because that's something women can't escape, yo. That's they can't escape. Like, as far as their oppression. Yeah. Um, like, we have male privilege. It's crazy. I was, I was walking in North last night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, I was talking about, Oh yeah, Raymond's over here. We walk over there, and it's a lot. She's like, I don't feel safe from yeah. me. And I said, yeah. I don't either. But I don't give a fuck. Right. You know what I mean? Cause I'm broke. No, you can't get shit from me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so right. like, you're gonna try to rock. You're gonna get a what? You want an iPhone three? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I have mad credit cards that don't work. I keep them shits on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here, take it. You know? Mm-hmm. They're not getting my one. I got a strain and. Ugh! Then it comes out. That's the one I use. Damn, so if you, you're trying to dig into the cavity to rob me, wait, 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 hold on. The card on, is on. about the hardest thing to do that with. Yeah, that. T- oh, what's the easiest, Dave? I don't know. I, Chapstick. <laughs> I <was assuming. laughs> a, a jelly bean. I got bean. some right over there. I'm, <laughs> you clean the dingleberries off? <laughs> hey, man, like drugs in jail. Just take the shit. Don't worry about how I got here. Mm. All right? Mm. Just take the shit. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah, we had yeah. we had that privilege as men to um to, to to maneuver and shit, and it's just like um I think when that I feel like every dude has to it should be catcalled by a gay guy at some point in their life just so they could have a, a sample mm-hmm. that they can relate that now to the oppression of women. Yeah, and it's like yeah. then I'm like, damn, what part do I play in that? Hopefully, you, you start know, treating women, you start treating yeah. women better after you've been catcalled by a man. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Cause I think that men don't listen, man. No, absolutely not. We listen when it's other men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just in general, you know what I'm saying? Um, and not not saying like us or we're just you know, but I'm saying in the, the general, general sense, population of men. Yeah. You yeah. know, a, a woman. I hear this all the time from a lot of my um women friends, uh, at their professional settings. They come up with an idea. It gets shot down. A man repeats the same shit they just said. And they're like, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, they're, they're getting a promotion. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. You know, so um, it's an ongoing thing. And yeah, man, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just, it's just crazy. But as far as um, appropriation, I feel like it has to be authentic. It has to be authentic. I don't want to hear... All music should be authentic. And yeah. Just period. Like, if Drake <clears throat> comes out doing some like the cool <clears throat> access pipeline shit just because it's trending... Yeah. Doesn't give a fuck about the You can feel it. You can feel yeah, it. Yeah, it's just like you can feel it. That's why, like a lot of rappers got on their Black Lives Matter shit. Yeah, and then went back to killing niggas. You, you know, my my when Kanye was good, my least favorite song of his was um, Diamonds, the Diamonds song. Diamonds Celia, are forever. Because yeah. it just wasn't his experience, and like he found, sounded so real in earlier albums, in in that album, and and in College Dropout, and even in Graduation, when talking about his own experiences. When you try to do something super conscious, but not from anything you know, any people you know, it just sounds real detached. Yeah. It's just like, and it was a, musically, it was a, it was a well produced song and everything, but it's just, it doesn't have that same kick when it's not something you live. I think authenticity, you could feel it, feel it in uh, in hip hop. Definitely, definitely. YG and Nipsey Hussle that fucked Trump, they meant that shit. Yeah. Yeah. They said it a long time ago before it was popular. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, I actually, you know what? There's some corny ass rappers. That's that, actually that's on too, or that's more on. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna mention mention their names or whatever, but from Jersey and um, a couple a couple years ago, I think when um, Eric Garner got killed, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> this dude who's made a lot of his career off of shooting niggas and shit like that was like, yo, let's do a Black Lives Matter song. Let's do a positive song. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was all right. Who are any positive rappers from Jersey? And people kept adding us. 
yeah. Negros in their in their thing. Who is Negros? Who is Negros? And you know, we, you know, we chopped it up or whatever. But I just told him like, <clears throat> I was like, we're gonna do something. It's gotta be real, man. It's gotta follow up with some real shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not doing this just because a dude got killed. I mean, that's cool, but that's what we do anyway. Yeah. yeah. The mission statement of Negros Americanos is on some 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 positive shit. You take any of our records around, it's not like this shit is trending now. You know what I mean? The the kid at Walmart's trending trending now. Let's do a, a yodel yodel record. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a hashtag that's getting mad likes. It's inauthentic. There are a lot of ambulance chasers and t shirt manufacturers and shit that make a lot of money off of dead black people, yo. Yeah. But like are they helping pay for the funeral? No. That, yeah. You know what I mean? Are we are we taking a percentage and putting that towards an organization that does protect us from police? Well that's that's um I think kind of it becomes a fine line too, cause the the power of a movement is that it makes shit like it makes shit cool that that wasn't before or wouldn't be like it makes speaking out cool. So there's always a fine line to me too. Like um, I love Curtis Mayfield, but apparently the people who are around then like his music super revolutionary, but apparently he wasn't really at all from some people I know, mm. but. It was like, that's what it was. So it made him produce that great music that we all love today. Mm. So like the movement actually like, you know, in in in, in, a, in a vacuum, you could look at somebody and be like, oh, they're doing it for likes or they're doing it for this or that. But um, I like the art and the art is still there. But a lot of times in hip hop, I can tell when it's inauthentic. So I guess maybe the genre makes a difference too. I can tell when mm. someone isn't, you know what I mean? Well, hip hop's based on authenticity. Yeah, Because you can't that's true. create an old dirty bastard. Yeah, you can't create a Buster Rhymes. Right, you know right. what I'm saying. These these guys are the old dirty bastard, no father to his style. You know, authenticity matters. Like that's why I don't really fuck with a Rick Ross. Like at the end of the day, he could rap and he has great pr- production, but he's a fucking correctional officer. Yeah. yeah, and he's rapping like the dude that did 20 years. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's not cool at all. And, then you know, and he, I'll say that to him. You know what I'm yeah, like, yeah. And then when he got called out on it, he was just like, "Nah, you, it, it's it's more sinister than that. Like you don't know the backstory. Like what backstory, bro? Like you were you were a correctional officer. Yeah. You, were you running drugs in was the he jail? Trying to like, admit what? that he was doing committing so crimes while that. he was. Yeah, yeah. say it. About that, I'll let you. You know what I mean? Well, it might be a statute of limitations. <laughs> <laughs> He's gangster, you shouldn't care, right? Yeah. The real Noriega owes him a th- hundred favors. So, gangster rappers, I want you guys to be honest. Talk about not being afraid to kill other black and brown people and talk about being um, scared of the state. Like, talk about, I ain't scared of shit. Include police in there. Yeah. Because you are, you run. You pop all the shit and when the cops come, you run. Your gang ain't big enough, bro. Let's call it what it is. And if that's the case, if, wait, your gang runs, hmm, that gang runs too. So does that gang. Maybe y'all motherfuckers should team up. <laughs> yeah, Let's get a gang consortium. Get a gang consortium. Because we're being overrun by a gang. And police is a gang too. And really, if you look at how a lot of these gangs started or their constitutions, in theory, are supposed to be positive things that protect us from oppression. Yeah, uplifting the community. And uplift the community, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm just sick of the bullshit, man. Yeah, Cats the, is soft, yo. The message. Cats is soft, and they're giving people passes. I swore when 50 was coming at Ross. I'm like, oh, okay, this is a cop in hip-hop, you know? This yeah. is it, you know? Yeah. That's just not authentic. So, like, but people don't care, yo. That's what's ill. No one cares. No one cares. I, just, I hope no, no rapper comes out using a political prisoner's name. Yeah, that would kill me, yo. Yeah, this shit already does. You know, so the, Rick the real Rick Ross follow me, yo. Yeah. not the yeah. fake rapper, the real Freeway Ricky. Freeway. I felt great. I was like, yeah. You Someone know? is gonna use a political prisoner's name. I guarantee. Young as Mia this or stuff some heats shit. up. That's disgusting. Yeah, man. nah. Someone Who doesn't will. do shit to help this cat get out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, yo, Ross was calling inmate numbers. Yeah. The real Rick Ross was an inmate number. Yeah. There's a difference. It's just different. <laughs> it's just, mm-hmm. you know, it's just different. I don't know, man. I think authenticity matters. It does. So to bring it back to how we, what we started with, that also means that straight rappers should not pretend to be gay. I, I understand the outrage of the of the people who uh, who don't like it. I, I totally understand. Yeah. If it's inauthentic. Yeah. That's who you are. Be who you are. Yeah, just be, yeah. A, be an ally. But don't anything, like, don't. okay, Muslims are trending now. Let me put on this kufi. Stop eating well, pork. 
Stop messing with white women. A few years ago, Nicki Minaj, she got in trouble. Remember, she put Malcolm X on the cover with the gun? And she yeah. called the out the mixtape like looking ass nigga or something like that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, appropriating imagery that has nothing to do with what you're talking about or really who you are, Nicki Minaj. Like, yeah. you know? You I mean that's so disrespectful. So that's disrespectful. So disrespectful. Is she jumping in front of any bullets? No. Is Nicki yeah. Minaj liberating her people? No. Right. no nothing you know? to do with her music. Her music is fine, but don't don't go bringing other stuff into it. Yeah. And like, you know, let's not get I mean Dipset used to say Dipset's a movement. Mm-hmm. And to some extent. Right, but to say Jim Jones like we the new Black Panthers, like sit your fucking ass down. No, you're not. That yeah. is, that's no, you're false. not. Yeah. yeah, y'all guys don't represent what they did. We a free breakfast program. You know what I'm saying? Stop comparing yourselves to people greater than you. I'm sorry. 